you all set for um, for Sunday then, Glenn? You all ready? Got your multimedia presentation? Yeah, all the whiz bang, everything. Yeah. You know, to knock their socks off. And you'll for be my talk at um, the Brass and History Association. Yeah, and you'll be doing this to um, you'll 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 be forming a dance around your 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 talk about um, blind houses, I assume. A dance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> After after your exploits with um, the uh, God, what was it the Kate Bush song and the oh the, God the the, the the hill fort the burial mound over by by um, Tidworth yeah this is going to be people listening to this this is going to be really tenuous they're going to think what on earth are they wobbling on about now but um, yeah going back to that Kate Bush video yeah so I seem to remember when we were discussing that before and uh, you were talking about your your, your dancing abilities, or was it mine? I can't remember. <laughs> well, I think we were trying to work out who was going to imitate Kate Bush in the red dress. Yes. Prancing around oh, in that, the that was def- country. That was definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, um, this Sunday, I am doing a talk at the Brasson History Association. First time I've ever done anything like that, actually. Um and it's going to be on blind houses. And if you listen to this podcast early enough, you may it may give you enough advance notice to come along um, in the afternoon. But anyway, it's four o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, it's four o'clock. And where is it? Oh, that's a good question. Oh no, <laughs> I haven't looked up where it is. You better find out before Sunday. I, I bet I had. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll probably find out ten minutes before when I suddenly think, where is it? I'm going again. Yeah. Um, well, let great. me look that up actually while well, we're well, talking. Yeah. So welcome to another Hidden Wiltshire podcast. We are now up to Hidden Wiltshire podcast number 28. Oh, 28, I think, yeah. <laughs> 28. Uh, my name is Glyn Coy, and um, I started this Hidden Wiltshire stuff aeons ago and um, roped in a trusted sidekick here to um, join me on this podcast as normal. It is... Uh, party Boy. Oh, sorry, Paul Timlett. <laughs> party Boy. <laughs> That's putting yourself on a pedestal. A yeah, bit, let's, let's not talk your about, age. Let's not talk about party. Well, yeah, quite. Let's not talk about parties. Eh? <laughs> no, but we've had we've had quite enough about parties in the last. We week, have. Yes. Say. Fed up with that. Um. Anyway, let's not go down another political rabbit hole because we are a politics-free zone on this podcast, and we'll lose two thirds of the audience. So. Yeah, except when something really annoys us in Wiltshire, like um, sewage in rivers, something like yeah, that. Yeah, we'll have a rant about that. Yeah, we can rant about things that actually are important. Anyway. So, yes, the Bratton History Association talks are at the Bratton Church Institute on Tining Lane. There you go. At four o'clock. And do you have to get, have a ticket or can you just rock up? I think you can rock up. You just pay. You have to pay. I think it's two pound for members, four pound for non-members. Right. Um, but um, don't all turn up. Otherwise, we might, <laughs> might not be able to fit everybody in. Yeah, I can just. Man of my fame. I, I can know. picture the queues around the corner. Yeah, exactly. There'll be, exactly. There'll be parking chaos in Bratton. Yeah, and I am going to be talking about blind houses. So, and that all be, that all came from about a year ago, actually. I did an article for the website on Wiltshire's blind houses, and at the time we were all um, locked down, not able to have parties or even go out the house in your car. So, um, what I did is um, I actually asked the Hidden Wiltshire community if they could give me some photos that I could use on the article, and um, I got a good smattering of photos of blind houses all over the county it was great feedback wasn't there There there's some some brilliant photographs on there yeah yeah it was really good and actually it's (laughs) this is we're going to talk about this a lot today but if you search for blind houses on google it's the number one hit that comes up is my article and and what we're finding is that (laughs) we, we keep coming up too high in the google searches so we've become the the authority on various things in it and it's so much so that you've ended up on a being referenced on the Wikipedia Wikipedia page. sites. <laughs> In fact, I was going to talk about that later, but as, as you mentioned it, 
yeah when when i was researching for the the, the main topic which will uh we'll, we'll come on to i i was i, I was googling um long null I, I can't say null is that is it null uh, anyway um I was Googling that because uh, I was sure that uh, – I, because I did a walk up there and I wrote an article about it and all the rest of it. And I'm sure I read something about the um, the, the, the pre- prehistory up there. So I found a, uh, uh, a Wikipedia a Wikipedia entry. And as I went down and looked at references, the first reference was me, <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> Paul Tim, like the authority the on authority, Long Null. The only authority on Long Null. <laughs> God, if only they knew. <laughs> oh dear, it's quite scary actually. We're, it is. <laughs> we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves, really. But um, yeah, it is funny how a lot of these things. The, the website gets so much traffic now that literally some of these things that we have up there, you search for it and it does come number one on the the Google list, which is quite amusing. Yeah. Um, actually, what is what is even more amusing, which uh, this will be absolutely nothing to people listening, but uh, you and I can see each other, and right now I've got. So these incredible sun rays coming through the, the yeah. window to my you right. You've got a halo. I do look like I've got a halo. <laughs> <laughs> this is this sort of rainbow of light rays coming. <laughs> you know, I'm just a silhouette. I, I can't I can't see your <laughs> face at all. You're just a black silhouette and this the starburst. Huge, it's a starburst. starburst. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to change it. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, what have you been up to the last couple of weeks? Uh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> Should we end it there? I think, I think we finished, is, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, the thing is, though, I mean, at the moment, it's it's quite hard to to go anywhere walking and enjoy it because um, the landscape at the moment represents the Battle of the Somme. Um, there is so much mud everywhere. That yeah. You bring up, you bring half of the hill back with you. So I haven't been out um, doing that many walks. I did go and I did do the Sutton Veeney Titherington walk the other week, and uh, that wasn't too bad actually. Um, yeah, because somebody asked on the Facebook group. It was um oh oh god, I'm terrible. Lenka 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 Stokes Lenka Stokes. Yeah. So she asked very good question actually. Is you know are there actually any walks that aren't like the Battle of the Somme? Um, which because I know for some people it's um. Uh, you know, it, it, it's quite difficult, even for those of us who are reasonably fit and healthy. We end up slithering all over the place, as mm. as you will recall from the round way down, <laughs> when you had you had to lie down in the mud. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a good question. So that that walk, that something you want, is a lot of that is in on sort of pretty well. Part of it's on road, isn't it? But um, yeah, it's quite good surfaces up the, the, the top there. Yeah, um, and then obviously people were sort of pitching in saying we'll try some of the um the, the imber range path um or yeah. path it's a, it's a blooming great track um it was wide enough to for two vehicles to pass on it because it's a byway um and that's pretty pretty mud free although there are some damn big puddles in those holes in the, the... yeah i'm heading up that way tomorrow because um i'm going up to nook castle around there um because i'm going to walk across to Dunscombe Bottom because the sheep are back on. Yeah. Um. So I'm counting sheep again. Oh, you're back to counting, are you? Yeah, forty this time. Forty sheep, right? Forty sheep. That's going to be a bugger to count. Yeah. How, how do you get them um, to stand still long enough? Oh, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to move fast. It's a bit of an art counting sheep, actually. Yeah, I noticed. Um, Melanie May, who's. Uh, I think she listens to the podcast, but she's—I uh, think she follows us and uh, mm. has got a brilliant um, uh, Instagram feed. As she posted some lovely photographs from up there. She's been up there counting sheep. It looks fantastic at the moment. Yeah, I saw the, those. The Mel, Mel's really good. She's organised us all to. She, she when when the animals go on, she's the one that sends out the email say we want to do some counting again and sets up the sort of calendar thing where we say which days we're going to go up. Yeah. Yeah. Super. It's funny though. I I've followed Mel for years on Instagram, and we do this livestock counting up on Dunscombe Bottom, and I've been doing that for about four years. We've never actually met each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these weird virtual yeah, yeah, yeah. friendship type things. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I did meet her. I, I you did, and, yeah. Her and, uh, and 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 Wayne up at um, uh, Folly Wood doing the they were, they were doing yeah. the Folly Wood walk. So yeah, lovely couple. Really delightful. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah, back back to mud. Um, as you know, I've done a, a couple of walks. In fact, two this week. Um, one in Wiltshire and one not in Wiltshire, although connected to. Um, yeah, and that got me thinking earlier, actually, because actually, I know we we bound our discussions inside Wiltshire. <clears throat> but it is tempting sometimes to think, should we just expand it a little bit over the border? Because there are some nice places that are just outside. But Does, does France and North Uist count? Well, according to you, it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I got Although I did see, I did see someone put a comment on on the page saying, "What's this got to do with Wiltshire?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> France. <laughs> yeah. I did try to explain in the article what the connection was and why I posted it, but I think people just look at the photographs. And well, well, I don't think what was happening article. is on, when, when you get a photo in a set that you put on the page, and one of them becomes more popular than the yeah. others. The photo appears yeah. in the Facebook feed without the yeah. accompanying without post. the context. Yeah, so you just see this random photo of somewhere, and you see Hidden Wiltshire, and there's a photo of something they've never seen before, and they think, right. you know, where's that then? That's France. Right. Yeah, I, I, got, I hadn't appreciated that because that 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 particular photograph of the inside of that burial mound has got yeah. sort of loads of, of you know likes or whatever you call it, um, you know, a completely disproportionate number. You think, well, mm. why is everybody liking that photograph? It's not a particularly good photograph, it's just the inside of a of a, a burial chamber. Um, but yeah, that would explain it. I hadn't I hadn't thought of that. Um, but yeah, of course you've got to read the article to get the context as to, yeah. to why I posted it. <clears throat> but yeah, you're right. I mean, so I, I, on Tuesday I um, went to the Uffington White Horse and the Castle and Wayland's Smithy, which are on the Ridgeway, um, and. They're not far out of Wiltshire. They're into Oxfordshire. I only went there because I met a, a, a friend who um, he, he wanted some he wanted a bit of a, a photography workshop. So I did sort of one to one with him up there, and um, so uh, that and it was sort of roughly halfway. So that's why we went. But of course, it's along the Ridgeway, and you follow the Ridgeway back into Wiltshire. And yeah, you know, I, I went there partly because I'm reading a book about it at the moment. And yeah. I think, as I explained in the last podcast, the, the guy who wrote the book when he sort of just, again, putting it in context, he starts his his approach to Uffington from Avebury. So he walks the, the Ridgeway from uh, mm. Avebury over a period of days and ends up at um, Uffington. But, uh, yeah, fascinating place. My God, the, I mean, you know, we think we've got history here. Uh, and, I, and the more I read into it, I mean, the Vale to the north of the White Horse and Uffington Castle and you know really recommend you go there i mean th- yeah. i think in the summer it'll get pretty busy i mean it's it's, it's a big sort of hot spot for dog walkers and you can understand why because the views are incredible but the veil to the north i've been reading about how uh, you know you know, relatively highly populated that veil was in going back to bronze age you know yeah. we talk about that a lot in the context of, of wheelchair and you know how some of these places would have looked and how i mean you just mentioned look castle um, you know, we've talked before about how many people might have lived in that area you know, thousands of years ago, and it's the same at Uffington. And and now you've got sort of villages dotted along the Vale. But um, the, the book I'm reading at the moment suggests that there were, you know, awful lot of um, uh, settlements all along the Vale, and these are the people that probably, you know, made the White Horse and built yeah. Uffington Castle, which is huge. I mean, you could fit a, a you know a large village or a small town in there. Yeah, it's funny. I've never been there. I mean, I've seen it a lot from the train actually. Mm. I mean, I've been getting the train back from London to Chippenham. Um, you see it. As you ah, is that what it, yeah, because we could hear trains, but you couldn't see them. Yeah, there's a main line from London ah, through to Bristol. Right, right. Um, so yeah, when I used to used to commute sometimes occasionally into London, um, I don't often look out for it. Mm. Um, as Again, the would approach Swindon. It was, it was interesting a bit. I read just yesterday actually about the, the castle because when we were looking at it, we, we thought, well, there must have been a you know quite a substantial community living here, and um, the evidence suggests, or the archaeological evidence suggests, that nobody lived there. And in mm. fact, it was a place for it was a meeting place. Um, it was a, a, a place for sort of a, a events, gatherings, um, and it's yeah. you know, and it, again, like so many of our. Um, hill forts, um, you know, great big um, sort of earthworks, deep ditch, 
which those days, obviously, the, the earthworks would have been white with wooden palisades all around it. It would yeah. have been incredibly uh, impressive. But people didn't live there, except yeah. maybe they went up there f- um, for sanctuary, you know, to to um, to you know, get away from raiding parties from other tribes and things. Yeah. And you do. Uh, you, so it got me sort of thinking about some of our hill forts, and we always assume that maybe there were small communities living in there, and we know that some were animal enclosures and we're going to get on and talk about that in, in, in a bit um, in the context of the main subject yeah but, um, but there, is, there is a theory that they were places of refuge so yeah yeah if you're under attack you go and yeah exactly yeah. hide in the hill for yeah um but uh and, and wayland smithy is incredibly impressive um it's it's like a larger um west kennet long barrow mm. it's even longer and it's just you know stunning so yeah do, do go there um, and the other, but it, it was, you know, going back to the mud, it was like an absolute quagmire in a lot of places. It was, I mean, at the end of the day, we just thought, oh, bugger it. And you just, what, you know, you just dive into it and, and wade through as best you can. And yeah. We were slipping and sliding all over the place. But on Monday, so the day before, Stu and I went to, we did, went up to Tidcombe, um, which is in Wiltshire. Just. And just yeah, uh, right on the Hampshire border, and we did the um, did the walk from Tidcombe Church um, to the Long Barrow, over to Hip and Scoom, um, and we did take a, a, a short diversion up to the uh, is it Fosbury uh, the hill fort there, yeah, and then back up through Hip and Scoom. Um, but it was such a grey, drizzly day, and I mean, I, Hip and Scoom is. is is, is stunning and you know we could talk about we'll talk about Eric Virilius in a minute but um, it is it is stunning very artificial landscape it is the whole area is completely given over to pheasant shooting mm. you know there's private signs everywhere there's covered for the pheasants um, but you still got the you know the coombe and the the, the path the, 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 the track yeah. that's sort of sinuous track that goes all the way up the coombe it's it, yeah in better weather i think it would be you know it, it, well, it yeah is. i know it's beautiful I've yeah seen I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen i've seen some really nice photos of it by actually our good friend steve dewey oh yeah on his Flickr account he's got yeah. some yeah he's done quite a lot of exploring over that way yeah and, uh, stunning well i'm going to write a blog about it um, and I'll put the photographs up, but they are really dreary because the weather was really dreary. Yeah. And as I say, you can't polish a turd. And um, yeah. these photographs are just grey. So I might be better just going full, you know, full tilt and just make them black and white because there's no colour. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we did find, um, we, we also went to look for the, um, uh, oh, what's it called? The, the stone. Um, Oh, I knew yeah, that unusual stone. Yes, yeah, so I knew I'd, I'd forget the name of it. It'll come back to me in a minute. Um, but there's a stone up there. And the reason we did this walk, because David Dawson at Wilshire Museum would like us to organise a walk up there for the museum. So I did it as a bit of a sort of recce. Um, so I sort of plotted a walk and then we went and did it just to see if it's, you know, if it works, where you can park and all that sort of stuff. Um but uh, yeah, so we went to look for this 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 stone. Um, I'm going to look it up whilst we're talking. But uh, that stone, it's near the the Shoot Causeway, isn't it? Yes, it's right at the. It's on the Shoot Causeway, um, and it's at a T junction where a road comes up from Shoot. Is it Shoot or Shoot uh, from from the village villages? Because you've got Shoot Stand and Lower Shoot, Shoot Cadley, and all that. Yeah. And then there's a, a road that comes up. Um, the, the the causeway is an old Roman road. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Because we we walked along it for a stretch. Um, yeah. But uh, I can't find the is name. It this, oh, is it the Kenwood Stone? Kenwood, or is it, yeah, it's either Kin, Kinwood or Kenwood. Yeah. Uh, depending on. Also known as the Devil's Waistcoat. Yeah. In fact, underneath this piece of paper here, I've written it down. Just realised. Uh, yeah, Kinwood. Came with all the devil's waistcoat, yeah. So, um, I know people have sort of struggled to find it in the past, but um, with um, the uh, directions that uh, we had, it was really easy to see. In fact, you can see it from the road if you know where to look, yeah. But it is, it's very peculiar, it's got some 
it's a sarsen stone and it's got some markings on it and i won't talk too much about it because we'll probably sort of do the walk in a podcast but um it's got some peculiar markings and there's a sort of debate of whether they're natural or man-made yeah um, and also when you if you touch the stone the legend has it you will surely die well that's complete nonsense yeah. because, I, because i'm here now so. yeah yeah i think um yeah let's talk about that in another podcast mm, i can yeah. tap up um katie whittaker who is um as far as I'm concerned, a total expert on sarsen stones. Mm-hmm. And I seem to remember she'd written something about this on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, well, that's, yeah, let's do that. that's to come. But um, yeah, we both, uh, I mean, in the last couple of weeks, we've both been to the museum, to Wiltshire Museum in Devizes to see the yes. Eric Revillius exhibition, which was stunning. Um, yeah. It's, it's amazing to see them with your own eyes, isn't it? Yeah. So that runs to the end of the month. Uh, to the end of January, and then it's it's gone forever because these pieces have been brought in from different collections all over the country. Yeah, and some of them, when they are moved out of the museum, are going to be put away for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember which one he was talking about. It might have been the I Causeway one. I think the Causeway one. He's going because I bumped into David when I went to yeah. see it, and um, he said, "Yeah, it's going to be locked in a dark room for thirty years or something." Yeah. Because obviously, you know, they're watercolours. So for people who don't know Eric Villiers, he, um, there's an exhibition called Downland Man at uh, the museum. And these are all watercolours of um, sort of chalk downland landscapes. Mo- mostly they are um, in Sussex and and here in Wiltshire. Um, so there's, there's, there's a very famous painting that he took, as uh, he took, he, he made... Um, over at Hip and Scoom, so he's looking down into Hip and Scoom, mm. and it's doing the walk. Uh, and then there's the the um, Westbury White Horse. He painted that. Um, yeah. But uh, what I hadn't appreciated was he was he was he was a, a war artist as well. So he was painting um, sort of down in in uh, on the Sussex coast, and he, you know the the, the searchlights. Um, painting sort of the, the shells that we were lobbing into France and the Germans were lobbing back at us. Yeah. He was painting that um, really striking. But the, the one, one thing, and I was saying this to David, is that the thing that really struck me was that, um, I mean, as you know, I, I've mentioned this before, I've got a um, just a, a, a large postcard or whatever it is of the, um, the, the causeway painting above my head here, recording. And I, I was quite shocked, really, at how muted the colours were in the in the actual paintings. So the the the, the, the print that I'm, I've got here is it looks quite brightly coloured. Mm. In fact, the ones they sell in the museum shop, you know, the postcards and stuff, they're all quite brightly coloured. And then you see the the real thing, and the colours are very muted. Now, you know, presume that's to do with ageing, which is why yeah. it's got to go into a dark room for thirty years. <laughs> mm. um, <clears throat> But uh, they, were, they were almost drab, I think. Um, they, they were quite sort of. It was, it was almost like camouflage, you know, sort of military camouflage. You know, the olive greens and the, the browns and the yellows. Um, but I, I was really taken aback by that. I expected them to be a lot brighter. Yeah, but I think um, one thing that doesn't help is I think the lighting in the mm. galleries is quite muted. Yeah, yeah. To try and protect them, so. Yeah you don't get a full light shining on no, them. No, so, that's a good point. So I think what I found is I didn't really pick up on the muted colours so much, but what I was doing is I was getting my face quite close into mm. looking at the detail. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny I did that as well because, I I mean, I, I, I can't I can't even do painting by numbers. I'm hopeless. Um, mm. But I was getting right up close and just looking at the brush, brush strokes, which are yeah, just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the sort of the stippling effect and I mean god the patience these guys have. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> and of course it's uh you know, he was he died relatively young, didn't he? I think he was thirty nine when he died. Yeah, he died in, in a plane 19, crash. Nineteen forty two in Iceland. Yeah. Died in Iceland. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. Very talented yeah. artist. And yeah. his his son was an supremely talented photographer as well. Yeah, and I hadn't realised he had, because we always talk about James Revilius, you know, his mm. son, or we do, but he also had another son, um, who was John, I think. Yeah. Mm. I think the first firstborn was, was John, if I remember rightly. But uh, yeah, real loss, he died, he died far too young, as did, as did James. 
Yeah. You know, he was relatively young when he died. <clears throat> anyway, where are we going this, this morning? What are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to go to a part of Wiltshire which is quite well known because it's over by Stourhead, but we're not going to talk about Stourhead. We're going to talk about various places around there that aren't so well known. So with that suspenseful introduction, <laughs> let's have some music. Okay, so this week we're going to start off... Actually, we're not going to do a walk because um, we do a lot of walks. But I'm going to talk about various places around that sort of Stourhead area where you can go and you can craft your own walk, really. But there's lots of different places around there that are of interest. So I thought we start off just by having a quick look at um, White Sheet Hill. So so White Sheet Hill is um, a piece of... It's like a chalk, chalk downland hill as you get in lots of parts of Wiltshire which is um, just the other side of um, the Deverells um, so actually when you're up there on the hill you can sort of link routes and walks through to the Deverells and the other side of the valley um, but, but White Sheet Hill is actually owned by the National Trust it's part of the sort of Stourhead estate um, but quite separate from it um, but I know when I went up there for the first time a few years ago i was absolutely blown away by how much um well one two things one how much ancient history there was in that landscape it's, there's a lot and the second thing is the views um yeah. are absolutely stunning up there just to orientate people um so if you don't know where it is it's between it's um a sort of east of the b3092 between maiden bradley and, and stourhead yeah um, and it's a place if you haven't been up there you will you'll be familiar with it you'll have seen it um, and it is it's quite striking it's quite imposing because of the you know because of the prehistory up there which we'll yeah we can talk about <clears throat> yeah it is and and one of the things as, as you often get on these um hill summits um there's an iron age hill fort up there where the shape is still quite discernible um so you can go and explore the ramparts. Um, but as you go up the hill, you sort of walk, you, you skirt past um, quite a prominent Bronze Age bowl barrow on, on your left, which is very often I go up there and you see people sat on it just looking at the views. Um, and then you follow the hill, the contours of the hill to the right, and you, you end up at the the ramparts of the, um, the hill fort. And, and I think there's a right to roam over all of that sort of area yeah there is um, yeah just got the map in front of me now open access yeah and it's quite a big open access area actually yeah uh, so you can craft lots of i mean there's there's um a roman road that skirts the top as well yeah um so actually um if you look at the ordnance survey map the one to twenty five thousand, which shows each right to rome areas so it's kind of sort of bordered with um sort of brown shaded thick brown shaded line mm. and you go from the parking area um up to the the, the the hill and the downs but then there's like a sort of a, um a bit that sort of snakes all the way along the mid wilts way and it goes for quite a long way um to, to yeah. the to the northeast and then to the east uh, yeah, it almost follows the contours because yeah cause the, the shape of the hills up there is quite extraordinary. Um, and there's a lot of sort of ridges and terracettes that come down the hillsides. It's very, very steep. Yeah. Um, and a number of different, here we go again, bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. lots of bottoms. They're everywhere. <laughs> that then point in the direction of Mir. In fact, the one that, that, that sort of heads down to Mir is called Great Bottom. There you go. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, you've got, I mean, just, I mean, as you were just saying, it's straight out of the car park and up the hill. It's quite steep, isn't it, when you first go yes. up there? Uh, but, you know, on what, just right by the, the parking symbol on the map, you've got, um, you know, pillow mounds marked there. Um, yeah. Which are, what are they? Um, trying to date those. Are they bronze, bronze age pillow mounds? Not sure, actually. Uh, I can't remember. Um, and then up to a, a, a Neolithic camp, as marked, which is a causeway yeah. enclosure from about 3000 BC. Yeah, you can that. you can sort of make out the shape of that <clears throat> if you know what you're looking for. Mm. <clears throat> but otherwise, it's quite unremarkable. But I'll tell you what really opened my eyes to it was a few years ago. The um, drone photographer, David Abrams, yeah. went up there and took a photo of the causeway enclosure. And you can really see the shape of it. Yeah. It's quite impressive. So David Abrams is doing a, an exhibition at Salisbury Museum at some point in the future. It's definitely worth having a look at when mm. that happens. Yep. I don't know when it is. No, but... no, I, I don't know. In fact, I'm, I'm hoping to go there tomorrow. Um, so if I can remember, I'll have a look. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the just going back to, to, to White Sheet and looking at all the sort of – because you, you go up onto the downs there and then it – it's you've got sort of almost like a sort of plateau, haven't you? And it just sort of yes. extends to, all the way to the east, and you can just walk for miles along there. Yeah. Um, and the views, particularly to the south, are just you know incredible. You know, right, right down into Dorset, and yeah, you look um, west to, um, to to Somerset. Um, and the, I've only been up there once. Um, can you believe? And um, the day I went. Um, I can't remember if it was particularly sort of blue. No, I think it was quite cloudy, but every now and then the sun would sort of come, would break through and you get these incredible shafts of light sort of picking out parts of the landscape. And I was, I, I, I shot some photographs like that there on my on a little camera that I carry around in my pocket. And um, it was just incredible seeing. I wish I, I took the wrong camera. I should have taken the big one with a tripod and everything. But yeah. um, it was just amazing views. If you if you get to the right place at those well, you can see all the way down to to Mir. Yeah. Now Mir is a bit of a strange one because it's quite it's in a sort of flat basin, but um, there is a quite prominent hill at the back of it. Um, I think it's called Castle Hill. Uh, yes, it is. Or, which, oh no, Long Long Hill. Yeah, it's lot Long Hill is the sort of it's like a, a ridge shape almost. Yeah, but the actual main mound I think is Castle. Yeah, where well, the map just says just says Castle brackets site of. Yeah, because I think there was a castle there in the mm. eleven twelve hundreds. That's right. Like yeah. that. And of yeah. course that you know there's, there's no way that's hidden because you can see it from the A three O three. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's very prominent. Mm. Um, it does make me wonder. I'd sometimes wonder was that a man made hill, but I don't think it can be. Um, no, I thought I did look at that. I thought, I read somewhere that it it wasn't. Although you're right, I mean, it just looks. Um, I mean, you know, Silbury Hill, for example, is is very evidently man-made, yeah. and it's 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 not it's not a cone like that. But it, it looks no. it looks too perfect, doesn't it, to be natural? Yeah, and I think it's I think the top's been flattened because yeah. when they built the castle, they yeah. flattened it. Um, but you can, it's quite nice actually. You can park in the centre of Mir and just walk up to the top of that hill, and you get then get views back over towards White Sheet Hill, um, which are very nice. Yeah. Um, but it's a bit noisy because you're close to the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tom, um, so just going to flit around again like I normally do. Just back to um, to White Sheet uh, mm. and the, the tracks along there. Um, before we started recording, you know, I was, I was looking for, for, for something. Um, the, you know, we talk about artists and, um, you know, creative people. So there's, there's a link coming here. Um, the poet Percy Shelley or Percy Bish Shelley. Yes. Um, his first wife um, was a lady called Harriet Westbrook. And I'm pretty certain I read somewhere that her was it her father owned it's a blooming great sort of country mansion um, not far from White Sheet and, and from Mir um, and I'm pretty certain that 
she she lived there. I, when, I, when I was googling it earlier on, I, I all I could find was references to to London, and because I think he was a coffee merchant mm. or something. Um, but I'm pretty, so maybe people can help us out there. Um, and you know Harriet Westbrook, because she doesn't have a Wikipedia entry, but I think her sister, from memory, does. And I can remember we were talk maybe we a podcast we were talking about this before, but um, I, I I read a um, a, a book and it's a, a trilogy which I've mentioned before um, and it's it's a novel um, but it's based on a lot of sort of historical um, uh, events and in this this book this guy the the author describes how um, Percy Shelley met Harriet Westbrook um, on one of the, the the tracks that goes past White Sheet Hill and um, uh, you know. In, in, in the story, she had, had, had dropped, a, a, I think, a note or something. Um, oh, that's right. This, that, it wasn't Percy Shelley that met her there. It was this, it was this, this traveller who was, was walking along there, and he passed this lady, um, this young woman, who dropped a, a, a letter, and he picked it up, and um, he, he looked at it trying to sort of find out, you know, who who this, this, this lady was so he could return this letter. And... Um, in the, in the story, it, 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 it turns out the letter was from Percy Shelley to this this lady who turned out to be Harriet Westbrook. Um, so there's obviously some sort of connection down there. Now that's that's clearly, well, I assume it's an invented story, mm. um, but you know it's based on the, the, the sort of connections that that Shelley's wife had, and, and therefore Shelley himself in 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 this part of the world. But um, I will keep googling when we finished and see if i can find that original source yeah another thing that's of interest though if you if you're in the car park at the bottom of white sheet hill um instead of going up the hill if you follow a footpath through fields to the west um it leads to a green space which is called beach clump yeah um now inside there because it's on a the beach clump is actually on an elevated piece of land it's on a little small hill um, but in there, you'll find um, what's known locally as the Dakota Memorial. Oh, yeah, that's where it is. It? Okay. Yeah, it's in that beach clump. And, and because apparently there was, well, well, first of all, near here, you had um, RAF SEALs mm-hmm. during World War II. Um, and RAF SEALs is long gone. and um, But you can still see, you still make it out. If you look on Google aerial maps, you can see the actual shape of the runways and the boundaries. And um, there is a sort of, an old building, um, which I think was the sort of tower. It was a control tower, area, that's right. Control yeah. tower. That, it's now a private house, but you can clearly see it's a control tower yeah. shape. <clears throat> and I know that um, when Stourhead's busy, they often move the cars onto the, the old RAF base to park yeah. um, around autumn time. But but yeah, it, it, I think there was a, a fairly catastrophic crash, um, which... I think John Gretsch wrote up something yeah, on the yeah. website about this um, on the 19th of February 1945. Um, that, that's not one when John wrote his article. That's when the crash happened. Yes, just, correct. Just to be clear, just to <laughs> clarify, just just to, for the avoidance of doubt. <laughs> um, but yeah, 20, 20 airmen were killed. Um, they crashed into that clump. Um, and actually, um, the committee that kind of took the action to create this memorial to, to remember these guys was, I think it, David Carson was involved in that. He's a oh, is he? our good friend. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cause um, I posted something about it on Twitter and he told me the story that a few of them got together and, um, you know, it worked to create this memorial. Yeah. It was quite a sad story though, because I think one of the people survived. Um, the pilot. One of, yeah. The pilot. Or one of the pilots. The, yeah. Yeah. And I, th- on, there is a sad story. I think he ended up committing suicide mm. years later, very sadly. Yeah, um, because the re- you read the reports, it suggests sort of pilot error caused yeah. the, the crash. He didn't climb high enough, and he, he hit the he hit the trees. It yeah, it was low cloud, and he just didn't go high enough. Yeah, he was flying in poor vis- visibility. On yeah, I tell you what, when I was sort of reading John's article, um, uh, the and you look down the list of the, the you know, they, and they would have been young men that, that died, mm. and it, it showed what their, 
you know what they did in in the, yeah. they're, they're all services personnel um i think all air force there was a mixture of canadian air force and royal air force mm. and the number of pilots that were listed amongst the, the dead yeah and, and you think of you know that in terms of you know sort of war effort and you know the number of young pilots who who, who died during the war and to lose that many pilots in one yeah. crash must have been had a you know big impact and what i don't know is whether they were you know what sort of pilots they were because i think it was that that particular flight was um I think they, it was sort of described as a, a, a glider pickup flight or something, and yeah. it, it was a training flight. So I assume they would sort of, um, I, don't, I don't know if they, they, they would sort of land and then collect a, a, a glider that had put down in a field somewhere, yeah, uh, and then sort of fly them out. And I assume they were training for sort of, you know, the invasion going back into Europe. Um, but um, so maybe, maybe they were all pilot, glider pilots. I don't know. Yeah, it just just really struck me the number that you know pilot after their name. Yeah, very sad. Yeah. Um, thing is, though, I mean, you you may not have done so much walking around White Sheet Hill, but you did. I think this is probably my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you did do a walk just north of White Sheet Hill, didn't you? And yeah, the Long Knoll and Little Knoll. I think that was on my list of places to. To yeah, it was. Yeah, to visit. So I decided to. to you took the challenge. To go, yes, I did. Uh, that may have been a foolish challenge as well, in in, in hindsight. But um, yeah, so if if you were driving down the the B three hundred nine two that I mentioned earlier on between Maiden Bradley and uh, Stourhead, so if you were heading south towards Stourhead, and just just south of Maiden Bradley, the road sort of passes between two hills. And to your left, to the east, is Little Knoll. And to the right, to the west, is is Long Knoll. Um, So I decided to sort of put a walk together that would take in the two knolls. Um, And then, uh, you know, having sort of driven up there, it needed to be a circular walk. Uh, I don't don't like doing out and backs. Um, So that's what I did. So I parked at uh, Kilmington um, and... Sort of try to get up to um, to, to, to Long Knoll from there because Long Knoll is the one that's nearest to, to Kilmington, and it turned out to be a bit of a epic. Um, and I, it was a again, it was a filthy day. Um, it was thick fog, and I expected the fog to, to clear and to get great views. Um, so across across the valley if you like across to the other side of the, that b road you, you can see white sheet hill <clears throat> from there there's this sort of good views of it and then again it's, it's, it's only early on down to south into dorset and to to uh, somerset and i was on long knoll in this thick fog and it was absolutely freezing and i had god knows how many layers on including a down jacket and i was still cold and i was sort of just um sitting there in the because again it, it a bit like a sort of mini white sheet it's um it's, there's a lot of prehistory up on long knoll um you know there's a couple of bronze age bowl barrows one of which yeah. colt hall um excavated um you know there was inhumation there you know, there was a skeleton i think um discovered there romano british coins so you know there was a later occupation after the bronze age um, there's a parish sort of boundary bank and ditch up there, which follows along the length of the knoll. Um, so there's a lot of earthworks up there, and I can just remember sort of being huddled out because it was windy as well. Unusually, it was thick fog and it was windy. Cause normally, wind clears the fog, and I was just huddled down behind this earthwork, trying to keep warm, waiting for this fog to lift so I could get photos, um, you know, across the, the, the landscape. Uh, in the end, I had to give up and just sort of carried on um, along the, the knoll. But getting up there, getting up to the knoll, again, it's very, very steep, um, even steeper than, than, than white sheet. And I was almost on my hands and knees, my sort of camera gear on, on my back. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's quite a prominent hill. Yeah. And and it's called Long Knoll because it's long. It's about a mile long, but it's this mm. it just rises from the ground. Yeah. Um, 
very visible as you're driving through, and you can see it very well from the top of King Alfred's yeah, Tower. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's 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 one of only two hills in Wiltshire that are classified as a Marilyn. That's right. Yeah. Um, Can't remember how many meters it was now. Uh, did see that somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it's it's yeah, it, it it's a big old hill, and the views are fantastic. But um, I think I mean have I, I, we'll put a link to the. The, the blog in the in the show notes but um the walk was uh oh here we are 288 meters i thought i'd read that but the walk yeah. up from kilmington which is dead flat was um uh, one of those very very annoying walks where you've got sort of footpath signs that have been removed or sort of half destroyed um paths which have been plowed up uh and um, a house had been built right across the, the, the you know, the, the, the right of way on, on one of them. Uh, yeah, I think that right of way has been moved now. Yeah, it has. It was going through their garden, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so much. I'm looking at the map and it looks like it's been moved to the left. Because I think, <laughs> I remember you were complaining because it looked like they chopped the top off the public the sign, yeah, sign yeah chainsawed it off yeah so. which presumably they had because the footpath of the right of way had been moved but even you know i did find my way to the um the amended routes and even then you look it looks like you're going up somebody's drive and, and yeah. you're just going across some fields There's, there was no signage there was nothing in fact there was from memory i think it was a graphic design studio there i had to go and knock on the door and say look you know am i am i, am I in the right place and they were very friendly. They said, "Yeah, yeah, just just head across the fields there." But of course, being thick fog, you couldn't see, couldn't see anything, couldn't see the, <laughs> the the stars. I mean, I had to use all my sort of old, sort of old-fashioned navigational skills, you know, map and compass, and you know, you aim to the next point you can see, you know, take a bearing and walk to it, which was you know clods of earth in this ploughed field, and walk to that, take another bearing. So it took me an hour and a half to walk about a mile up to, to get to the top of of Long Knoll. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's I I can't see any other sort of easy way to to get up there. Um, and then of course once you are up there, to avoid just going back on yourself, you walk the whole length of Long Knoll and you end up being tipped out onto the B3092, which is a pretty dangerous road. I have to say, it's pretty fast. Um, yeah. And 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 the, the track doesn't go on. You know, you ha- you literally you're forced to either climb over a fence. Um, or a gate or something, or walk along the road, which at that point I wouldn't recommend it because the visibility yeah. is pretty poor. There's some sharp bends. But if you wanted to get on to Little Knoll, um, then that's what you've got to do. You've got to a walk a length of the, the road to get through onto a track that, that, that will take you, that skirts to the south of Little Knoll. But Little Knoll is, um, which I didn't know at the time, but I now know is, is open access. So once you taking your life in your hands and got across the B3092, you're up onto Little Knoll. And again, it's it's like a mini Long Knoll, as the name would suggest. Um, and it's just this this hummock you know, this, of, of, of earth um, straight up to the top. And again, the, the view's staggering. Of course, by the time I got up there, the fog had lifted and the sky was blue. And I mean, what a transformation. Some amazing views to be had up there. But uh, mostly what I remember is just the, the, the mud and the trudge to get back. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, wasn't the best of days. No. I'll tell you what, though. Once um, when I was on White Sheet Hill, there was an information board which told you about the, the ancient history on the site. I think the National Trust must have put it up. Um, but it got me scratching my head a bit because it, it referenced um, another hill fort that's local to here that was called park hill mm. um park hill camp i think it is um which is right on the other side of the valley it's over up on above um Stourhead. it's actually over towards more towards alfred's tower in the woodland ah uh, yes yeah so um what i did is i i did another trip over that way i parked over by alfred's tower um there's a nice car park over there um, and I think it was there where that chap put the video up on the, uh, yeah, the, the Facebook yeah. group about the stone, the, the plague stone. Yeah, it's, plague stone. it's um, yeah, it's just just I, I've 
posted about it on the um, the Facebook group as well. Because having seen his video, I went to went to find it. And uh, once you know where to look, very easy to find yeah. right by the road. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a little bit further past the um, the Alfred's Tower car park. And there is a little yeah. pull in there. There's a little lay by, and yeah. it's just sort of opposite that. But yeah, it's it's that it's that sort of area. Yeah. But um, what I did is I I followed. There's there's a load of there's a huge wood there which is under the management of the National Trust, and I follow various tracks to. I was heading over to a part of the wood called Shady Hanging. Um, and just north of that on the Warden survey map is marked out the shape of, of a fort. Um, and again, when you go over there, there's information boards up which tell you about it. And, and one of the things it says is that um, there's been no archaeology done there. Yeah. So they don't actually have a dating for it, but it's probably Iron Age. Um, but they've chopped down the trees in the middle, so... Um, it's a, you can clearly make out the shape of it now yeah and have a good walk in and a wander around and i remember at the time i put my drone up to get an aerial shot of it probably shouldn't say that because national trust don't like you uh no. buying drones no, that's right uh, oh you didn't was, you didn't know at the time did you no i didn't know at the time so i plead ignorant yeah um and of course nobody ever puts their drone up at stowhead no i've never seen any drone photos on instagram no today. never no <laughs> <laughs> Um, don't be sarcastic no. <laughs> but you can walk there from inside stairhead from the sort of lake area yeah um, you head up six wells bottom um and via to your left it's, it's up on the hill there it is worth a look I, I was sort of reading your your blog about that the other day and um i've never ever been into those woods there and it is a huge area isn't it it's huge yeah i mean it goes all the way well all the way up to alfred's tower and i mean it just goes on and on and I always sort of tend to go up six wheels bottom to the top and then sort of hang a right and then back down to, to Stourhead. But if you go yeah. left into those woods, so I had no idea until you reminded me about your, your blog um, that that fort yeah. was even there. No, not, not many people know about it at all. Um, and those woods, they do. I mean, they, they if you follow them, they, they link all the way up to almost up to Warminster. Yeah. Um, Longleat area. Yeah. Um, huge. Well, that's another of these um, these peculiar, mysterious woods, which I, I might have sort of talked about before. But um, again, I'm trying to find out there, trying to remind myself of the name. But um, oh, um, just to the north of Kilmington is a place called Gare Hill, G-A-R-E. And um, in my more active cycling days, we used to do club runs along the road that goes over sort of Gare Hill and you've got those mm. woods there um, and you know they continue sort of to the south and it's all marked Witham Park and Kingswood Warren um, all the way down to Alfred's Tower but if you if you go along that road that goes over Gare Hill so you're heading sort of vaguely in the direction of Froome um, a, bit, a bit like Furs Knoll you know listen out for birdsong right you won't hear any it's always it's just a spooky place it's always silent and when we used to ride along there you get a group of i don't know half a dozen riders or whatever or however many and it, there was always a, like a hush descended on the group as we because you know you chatter away when you ride along and people get annoyed because we have to shout because we can't hear each other <laughs> but um on that bit you know you ride along and every just go quiet and you'd listen and there was nothing no bird song yeah must be haunted or something. Then. Well, there are stories, yeah. There's definitely um, all sorts of weird and wonderful stories, which um, it's probably for another time. But um, yeah, there's there's lots there's lots to see in that part of the world. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's sorry. You did mention. Um, I'm distracted because I'm looking at my map here. Um, from Little Knoll. The, the views and you said that this area is near to the Devils and the view from Long Knoll, oh, sorry, Little Knoll, um, over to the Devils and particularly to sort of Cold Kitchen Hill and all that area that we've talked about before. Again, absolutely stunning. And you see all the way down the sort of the River Wiley, um, yeah. you, know, down, you know, down the Deverell Valley um, over to, well, I don't know, probably towards Sutton Veeney in that direction. Yeah. Well, I know if you do, Either one of the um, 
several walks that we've got on the website, you mm. get very good views of Little Knoll and Long Knoll. That's right, looking back west towards back. the knolls, yeah. And you can see King Alfred's Tower in the distance as well. It yeah. kind of, yeah, it's a very distinctive landscape and really worth exploring. I highly recommend it. And one of one of your blogs that you've written about this area, you I think you had some pictures where you could see was it you or was it somebody else where you could see right over to the, the Somerset coast and you could see Hinkley Point Power Station. Oh yeah, that was me. That was that you, was, was it? It was. Uh, I was up on the top of King Alfred's Tower on a really clear day. Oh, that was it, yeah. So I was having a really good look around yeah. to see how far can I actually see up here. And you could see right uh, right across to the Somerset coast. Yeah, astonishing. Um, all the way over to Hinkley Point. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how many miles that is. It must be 40, 50 miles. Yeah, got to be. But that photograph you took, I mean, it was really clear. I mean, you could make out the, 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 the nuclear power station there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I, had, I think it was, as, I had a decent zoom lens on, but it wasn't like my really super duper one. It was mm. a mid-range one. So, yeah, it was a fantastic clear day. And you get, you can see Glastonbury Tor clear as a whistle. Oh, that was it. That was the other landmark, yeah. Yeah, and you can look across as well, see down to deep into Dorset. Mm. Um, but um, there are some um, guides up there which kind of tell you what to look for in the landscape, saying, mm. you know, in that direction you see a blah. But you can see all the way up to Warminster and... Um, I think you can actually see as far as um, Roundway Down and uh, mm. Oliver's Castle. You can see that quite clearly. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a fantastic um, viewpoint if you go up there. Um, I tell you what, I'll I just look at my notes again, um, back to the, the, the two knoll, knolls. And I didn't know this at the time when I did the walk, but on Long Knoll, as you sort of head east towards Little Knoll, um, there is, and I, didn't, I, I don't remember seeing it, but there's a building up there. And it's the, it's Wiltshire's only surviving Cold War visual reporting post, uh, and it's the only one that survives. So again, that's that's something for John Gretch, isn't it? To so where to was that? About. Where is so, that? So uh, you go up to Long Knoll from the from Kilmington side. Yeah. You get up to where all the the earthworks and the the, the, yeah. the burial mounds are, and you follow the knoll all the way along. Um, and it's right as you start to descend. Um, towards the, the that B road, uh, I think it's it'll be on your right somewhere, and I, I didn't I don't recall seeing it, but it's marked on the map. Uh, and I don't mm. I don't think it's marked as it, it doesn't say what it is, but there is a building there. But apparently it is this this Cold War um, reporting post. Anyway, I think we're, we're yeah we're about done here, aren't we? I think we are. Yeah. yeah. So we can wrap up. Yeah. As normal. Yeah. Um, have we got any thoughts for the next episode? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <Have you? laughs> well, um, yes. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Re- yeah, we'll talk about that. So we'll leave people in suspense on that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, we'll be, I, have I promise you we will, we will be back in two weeks' time. We will. We will yeah. have something to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so anyway, thanks to Steve Dixon, as usual. Um, so the piece we use there, we're, we're, we're back round to using old stuff now, although there's plenty of it. But there's um, that was called Downlands, which again seemed appropriate. I think we used it on something like podcast number five, so we've not used it for a while. Uh, so thanks, Steve. Still waiting for the uh, the new material, mate, uh, if you're listening. Um, the website for show notes, links, and the online shop where you will find the book, or books. Yes. Um, still got quite a few copies left. Yep. So um, do feel free to go and purchase your own your own copy. Yeah, we seem to have sorted out the post issues now, I think. Yeah, yeah, we sorted that out. Although one of my brothers is still waiting for his a month after it was posted, so I might have to take him another one. But, uh, yeah, uh, if go into the shop and you'll see them available there. Yeah. Um, otherwise, they're available in Devices Books, in Devices, and... Wiltshire Museum. Wiltshire Museum, in the shop. Yeah. Um, so, I guess we'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs>